Give it a few more minutes for uh, some more folks to join. Let me just go and ping in the chat. Just make sure that folks know the meeting is happening. Give it another uh, minute and then we can get started. All right, we can uh, get started as people join, they can uh, join. So um, just, uh, uh, yeah, uh, as a reminder, um, you know, this meeting uh, is under the CNCF, which means that uh, your participation uh, should abide by the CNCF code of conduct. Um, and we can get started. So, uh, well, first off, um, want to wish everybody a happy new year. Uh, Hope everybody, um, if, they, if they got a break, had a good break. Uh, and yeah, so uh, so a couple of housekeeping things. Um, I know that there's been, uh, you know, I, I know a lot of folks are asking, hey, where's the, where's the reference architecture? What happened with, with all that? Um, it does seem like uh, I threw a combination of some, um, oh, uh, another thing I forgot to mention is uh, the meeting is being recorded and so it will be uploaded to, uh, YouTube um, some point uh, shortly after this, uh, the meeting ends. So uh, there was some, I don't know if it was miscommunication or um, uh, there, there's some stuff with between um, 
the U.S. Thanksgiving holiday and, and New Year's. Uh, a lot of folks in the CDF were on vacation and, and whatnot. So uh, we wanted to get the draft ready for review, um, but we wanted that draft sort of cleaned up a little bit because um, in, in previous sort of white paper uh, work that we had done, um, we wanted to stop, uh, or sorry, we wanted to prevent as much um, like typo related comments in the document. Uh, and we wanted fo folks to really focus on the content um, and, and that sort of thing. So this time um, uh, we were doing that. So most likely the, uh, the draft will be going out either end of this week or early next week. Uh, so Andres is cleaning up um, because the, sorry, I should say that the, the technical, um, one of the, the CNCF technical writers is still on vacation. So Andres is just going to cleaning up um, the doc a little bit more and is going to be publishing it as a PDF and going to be sending it out to the, um, the mailing list and out on Twitter uh, as a call for um, public comment uh, within the next few days, early next week, that sort of thing. So just to uh, give folks uh, an update, just so that you know, you don't think that it just kind of disappeared. And uh, I know we we rec we all recognize that we want to kind of get this out sooner rather than later, especially given that um, there's a lot of different projects and groups that are starting to even cite the um, the Google Doc draft, and we want to make sure that we can kind of uh, turn it into something um, real uh, and and get ready for a release um, around KubeCon Valencia. So that's the big update. Um, Want to just sort of go around uh, the go around the group a little bit and um, see if anybody else had any sort of big. I know we we haven't had a meeting since uh, mid December. Um, Want to see if anybody had any updates, um, any big things that they wanted to discuss. Yeah, Oh, uh, Steve. Hey, folks. I'm sorry. I was realized my mic. My, anyway, the mute button is always the fun one. <clears throat> I was curious. I, I've been watching like these conversations around um, role, the what goes into an S bomb, what goes in the scan result, the intermixing of those, and some other pieces, kind of like the roles and responsibilities, and can you leverage one thing for its purpose? And I'm curious if you guys have put any thought to any guidance there. Uh, sure. Um, so uh, I know that's one of the topics we do want to discuss this year. Um, that's a big thing um, from from my that that's a big open question from my perspective. I know that there's a lot of uh, open issues in the various SBOM formats, as well as Salsa, as well as in Toto, around you know what fits where uh, in in the picture because there's a lot of different formats. There's a lot of different frameworks and specifications. And um, I know one of the big things that, that we want to really address, um, or at least I want to address, is the how do we make some of these things a little bit better in specifying what am I not claiming? So uh, uh, what, what sort of specific things in a bad station in an SBOM, you know, like as an example, right? If, if my SBOM is just looking at operating system packages, can I specifically say this SBOM only includes operating system packages? It does not include, you know, dependency libraries and those sorts of things. And that's all I'm claiming in there. How, what, what sorts of things can we, we do to, to um, help out? Because I think as we go through and begin to audit and whatever, we just want to have a better idea of what, who's claiming what, when, um, so, that, so that we know what's in there. Uh, but that's interesting. Uh, so what you actually kind of went, so, I, I was thinking of like, is an SBOM related to what went into the package and, and a scan result is an opinion based on time. You're actually bringing up another interesting pivot that says, what is the scope, not just the scope of the SBOM from a, an opinion based on vulnerabilities and other things, but I'm not even trying to do anything more than this. I am listing this. And if somebody else is interested in something else that goes into the recipe, that's good, but that's you're declaring, you're not making, you're explicitly making a statement that I'm not trying to cover this thing. That's an interesting scoping thing. 
Yeah, and and actually, it was something that was I think uh, interesting that that uh, some of the Anchor Sift folks had brought up in um, yesterday's meeting in the uh, Open SSF was um, you know what sorts of things like you know they're using some heuristic models for certain things right where where maybe it doesn't make sense to sort of have it baked right into the build tool and those sorts of things or where you don't have access to the build tool and you still want to get a reasonable idea of what's in a, you know, a directory or container image. And I think one of the things that, you know, is kind of lacking is like, how do we say, Hey, look, we're just looking at what's in the image. We're not, you know, looking at what's actually happening in the build. So just understand that that's how that model works. And I think, um, even just sort of specifying some of that information is, is hugely important so that when I go back and look at it, I know, yeah, what's the scope of that thing. And I think you do bring up a good point though, where there is currently some overlap between, um, the different domains right now. I know a lot of folks are asking like, Hey, where does the S bomb end and something like a exactly. build data station begin? Where does a, you know, like do I associate scan data in the S bomb? And some of that sort of stuff I think has been sorted out a little bit where, you know, um, you know, a scan is like a, a sorry, a, a S bomb is, Hey, this is what we detected at this point in time when we built the tool or when we, you know, ran the actual sort of scan of the thing. Um, but I think there's a lot there that still needs to sort of to your, to your point needs to be sort of figured out. And at least from, you know, my perspective, mostly acting as a consumer of a lot of this stuff is I just want to have a good idea of what's in, what, what the tools that are generating this stuff, all this data, mm -hmm. um, what are they actually claiming? And it's okay for me right now, if there's some overlap, if in the next, you know, year or two, uh, it, it all, you know, eventually things get sorted out. Um, I to take this back, I, I don't want, I, I don't want to make a claim like, Hey, look, you know, uh, everybody should be doing everything, but I'm okay with a little uncertainty. If it gets some of this data in, in folks hands sooner rather than later, if, if that makes sense. No, it makes perfect sense. And the reason I'm bringing it up here is, you know, this has been to your point of the papers and the guidance and you know, it, it's never of a, you shouldn't do X, it's here's what we're thinking and having, because it was the, this has been developing for a while. We've seen what Cyclone DX's opinion is on some of these versus SPDX, and then the anchor um, thing yesterday kind of just <clears throat> reinforced and even some internal conversations we're having in Microsoft. So I, I've started writing a paper on, you know, an opinion of roles and responsibilities that I'm happy to share it here. So if others want to collaborate on it. Um, that was kind of why I was thinking, because I'm seeing us starting to shift into building tools. And I think there's having some of these boundaries kind of defined will help. But also say, here's a here's what we think is a boundary. Is that the right boundary? Um, and one of the, the perfect example you bring up is when I build a thing, are there vulnerable? And if I'm trying to build an SBOM is when I'm building a thing, do I capture? what is viewed as vulnerabilities and in the article i'm writing i kind of used um, asbestos as an example in the 50s to 80s asbestos you advertised as the best practice for you know securing from fire in a theater so at that point you could argue you were looking for the inclusion of asbestos in your in your bomb as a best practice and then after that it became so bad it was an exclusionary thing so that's part where I struggle a little bit around S bombs. Is it is it a factual list of what in as opposed to an opinion of what we think it's good or bad? Um, so if folks are interested, I'll, I'll share the the paper I'm working on, and, and people can comment on it. Cool. Yeah, yeah definitely my, interested. Uh, Brandon. Yeah, I was going to say my own take is I I would want to have the S bomb as best as possible to be the static factual what you know is in there, the act, you know, here are the packages, not here are the vulnerabilities on the packages. Um, but I know we've also been looking at not just the SBOM on what we're building, but also the build infrastructure itself might be its own SBOM. The, some of our upstream dependencies, they're going to bring in their SBOMs. We're going to fan those and merge them together. And then we look at cloud environments, if they're providing a SaaS, I think customers are going to want to know, here's the SBOM for 
the actual SaaS environment we're running within. That's important to them. Yeah, yeah that's great. That's, that's kind of another pivot of what uh, Michael was talking about with the, the scope. I'm only trying to do packages. Well, maybe this SBOM is only about the build environment because I want to know what's what's actually on that machine because later it turns out that you know that, that machine was built with peanut butter and it turns out that's bad for some people. Um, anyway, okay, I, I will uh, get that out. What, what does work best for folks here? A hack doc? Um, a Google Doc, or you know, and just what, what do you guys have an opinion? What's worked best for you guys on this? Um, I, I don't think uh, we necessarily have opinion. Some people post it on their personal blog, some people post, put it in a Google Doc and share with the team. Uh, a gist, uh, a GitHub okay. repo, it, it doesn't matter. <laughs> Fair enough. Thanks, folks. Cool. Um, yeah, so uh, the only uh, so one other thing I wanted to add on there, which is is something that I know, um, I think that there's more than enough uh, various working groups, and, and we're all kind of in a million meetings as as is. But I know that there's also been some discussion around it, maybe even getting some of the folks between um, you know who are working on some of the S bomb specifications and the Intoto attestation specifications and Salsa and uh, you know a lot of the other sorts of um, frameworks, standards, specifications, et cetera, to, to, to start to kind of talk through. Um, I think one of the big things, regardless that, that that is a very, very big open problem is the one around um, how do we, uh, how do we accurately reference um, artifacts? And I use that term very, very broadly here where the artifact could literally be a piece of software or the artifact could be some other metadata like another attestation or an SBOM or whatever. How do we accurately um, do that so that when somebody, let's say, pull in an attestation, maybe they want to say, oh, this reference, like this attestation is making a claim and the proof of that claims or the materials related to those claims, one of the materials is an SBOM. Okay, let me pull that down for an audit or whatever, right? Like there's some things there that are kind of missing. And I know one of the big things is like, you know, uh, whether it's a package URL or, or you know, using um, OCI content descriptors or using a, a, any of the other things that, that people are talking about um, uh, there, I think uh, is something that is also going to be coming up probably in the coming weeks as things that people are going to start trying to really um, talk through. Because uh, I know one of the big things that's happened is as people have begun to generate SBOMs, generate these attestations, starting to follow some of these best practices, they say, okay, great, I have a lot of this data, but how do I know what data is all related to an artifact or its dependencies or whatever? And, and a lot of that sort of information is, is sort of lost in the mix right now. And so there's just some discussion of how can we make that easier um, in some of these formats to start to you know be able to refer to some of that. So for example, vulnerabilities, right? I, th I know that there's some discussion. Yep, today it makes sense to have asbestos in here. Later on, there's a big vulnerability. Oh no, like it's, it's probably not a good thing, but we still wanna be able to say, okay, well, cool. How It's, it's less about having the SBOM say, here's a vulnerability. It's more about saying, okay, but here's a unique identifier for asbestos great, now I can look in a database on an ongoing basis. Hey, is this still good? Is this still good? Is, still, is this still good? And then eventually go back and say, oh, nope, if we just detected in you know something new. It's no longer good. Now I can go back and audit all the things that have that unique identifier. Um, but because I think today, a lot of that sort of stuff is not really um, fully baked as to how we specify it, right? You know, there's different versions, there's different, you know, uh, as an example, is is Red Hat's packaged version of OpenSSL the same, literally bit for bit, the same as Alpine's? No. Are they both vulnerable to the same thing? It depends. And so there's a lot of stuff up there I think we want to also begin to, to, to sort out. Any yeah, other thoughts? Just on the pro stuff, like we actually went through this exact conversation and it was, um, Brandon was there as well. We were trying to basically, yes, OCI, we're hoping we can leverage those more and more as pretty much every cloud native environment has you know, a, a registry and there's value in building and leveraging that. But of course, 
there's other pack there's existing packaging managers out there. So we did do a whole bunch of conversations in the Perl spec. Um, sorry, I'm halfway pasting half a sentence and then the link where we tried to address that because the idea is that um, as much as we love to registries for newer things, there are existing and Perl seemed like a good example for that. The, um, the big challenge we had with Perl, which I think we landed on, was is Perl uh, a locate, separating location from identity. And I think we landed in a good place through a lot of long debate that Perl is about identity, which has hints on location because the idea is location is transient. It just to, to solve that. So I, you know, just in this, always looking for other things because we originally in the OCI group a couple of years ago decided against Perl. Um, and then I think Perl's evolved to help with that. So it'd be great for people to have some opinions on that. Yeah, does anybody have any thoughts on that? I know that's a, a pretty big um, topic. I, I, I personally don't know enough about either of them. I mean, I know I know what I want to get out of it. Um, I just don't know what um, what's a best practice here and, and whatnot. I just know that the big things I would love to be able to kind of figure out is a combination of things like, here is a reference to that thing. And whether or not you have access to it is sort of, I don't want to say irrelevant, but is not necessarily required in all cases. Oh, sorry, Brendan. Uh, you're... Ah, you, you finish your point. Okay. Um, so, so yeah, my, my, my point, uh, so just to finish up quickly, was, um, was I want to have a way of specifying um, if I did have access, like, you know, it could be a URI or whatever of where would I pull down that thing? Um, and then other metadata that I might care about. And this is where I think it, it requires some flexibility uh, in there. And that's where some stuff like the package URL things seem to make sense where I can go and say, oh, this is this version or whatever. I know some there's certain cases where you might want to say, actually, uh, I'm making an attestation based on you know a range or whatever. Um, and then also optional hashes and those sorts of things that, that I might be interested in. But I think the, the big thing there is, is just having um, some way to easily describe that where I know if I have access to it, where it lives, um, or not necessarily literally where it lives. It could be like a package URL where it could be a mirror, um, you know, hashes if I need it. Uh, mm -hmm. what is the, what is the type of the thing, which is, I know a big one, right? Which is, Hey, uh, one of the big ones is what is this JSON that, that you're, that you're attesting? Like, is it Cyclone DX in JSON format? Is it just some random data that you're, I don't know. Um, that, that's, that sort of thing I think is, is also another big one, but that's, yeah. Sorry. Yeah, part of the complication we were dealing with the uh, Perl discussions a while back with OCI is that Perl is very much about the kind of object you are signing. And so it's very much focused on, I'm signing a Debian package, I'm signing a, a container image, something like that. And a lot of us are very focused on this thing exists at this point inside of an OCI registry. And so we're, we're kind of coming out a little bit from different sides and the challenge we'll run into is there's not gonna be like a Perl for every different artifact type that you can have in a registry right off the bat because there's already a Perl for a Helm chart. So whether the Helm chart exists within a registry or outside of registry, it doesn't really matter to Perl. And so there's gonna be a few little complications there, but I think overall it's probably one of the better options for trying to at least track what the objects are that we're looking at. Cool. Um, one other thing before I forget, uh, so not next week, but the week after, um, uh, let me just, Double check here. Yeah. So Hector Fernandez will be um, demoing. Uh, he's been working on actually using S bombs, uh, creating a sort of admission webhook that can actually parse through um, S bombs uh, for for admission. Um, 
So that's going to be, uh, so once again, not the 13th, but the 20th. So other than meetings talking about specific topics, do we have stuff that we should be thinking about as a group between now and whenever the paper gets to a next step? So uh, yeah, um, we are open to obviously things that, that folks want to focus on. There, there's definitely um, a few things that, that we want to sort of kind of talk through, things like, um, uh, you know, hey, now that we have this data, what can we do with it? Um, it might also be valuable to kind of, you know, talk through uh, some areas where, hey, when we wrote the first draft of the document, for example, um, some of the spiffy spire stuff wasn't fully integrated in a bunch of different pieces. I know a lot of work has happened on that in, you know, recently where we might, um, you know, be able to kind of uh, provide a little more guidance around the spiffy spire stuff. Uh, but Generally, I think we're, we're open to all sorts of new stuff, whether that is, hey, we want to focus a little bit on writing some code and writing some tooling around some of these things or what, you know, what have you. But um, I know the big thing that we just really, really want to push out is make sure that the, this doc gets out there so that um, we can get, start getting feedback on it uh, so that hopefully it'll be ready by um, KubeCon Valencia. But yeah, open to, to thoughts and also open, I think, especially given that it's the new year, I know a lot of folks have been hacking on stuff. Uh, if, you know, if, if December was quiet for December was quiet for some folks, if anybody has any sort of interesting things that they want to demo, show off, discuss, we're very much open for the next, especially the next few weeks um, as far as topics go. Uh, if I get approval, I would very much like to show off some of the supply chain querying stuff I've been trying to kind of um, uh, build out, which is uh, like doing stuff like taking in toto attestations and following them to the materials and then making, you know, looking up that data in stuff like whether it's Graphius or, or document database or Recore or whatever, or in OCI, um, and then continuing to kind of um, sort of follow it down a chain, um, you know, to build out, you know, a supply chain graph. Um, but I, I need to get approval for that one. You just have this picture of follow it down the rabbit hole. It's, and it's not a bad thing. Yeah, yeah, I, I know it's, it's, it's like one of the, um, is the big things is like, uh, a lot of folks have been talking about, you know, Okay, cool. We have some attestations. We can use those attestations with um, webhooks and, and admission controllers, like whether it's Kiverno or, or OPA Gatekeeper, um, to sort of control that. Yes, uh, you went through all the right sort of build processes. You have a signed S bomb. You know, whatever. We, you're good to go to QA production. Um, that sort of stuff is good. But then, uh, you know, as people have sort of rightly pointed out, um, that how does that help with the log for J situation, which is sort of an after the fact, right? You know, it's not that, hey, this will help me in the future to make sure I don't include a compromised or sorry, a vulnerable version of a log for J, but that doesn't help me today in figuring out what of my, which of my tools has that unless I literally do a scan against every single S bomb that I have. So are there ways that I can start to, you know, build databases of this? you know, information and so on, so that we can, you know, run queries and say, hey, uh, whether it's like a Merkle tree or whatever, just like I have an artifact somewhere in its dependency graph, is there a vulnerable version of 
log4j, right? Just even just starting there. One day we can even kind of say, is, is this a vulnerable version of log4j that can be exploited? But like, let's just start off with the, the you know, the, the quick one, which is just like, am I using somewhere a vulnerable version of log4j in, you know, my piece of software? I mean, that's kind of what I was getting at the S bump stuff is, is it, if it's after the fact, it's hard to tell, right? It's like DNA analysis on soup. Um, whereas if you know what went in it and it's the log4j one was an interesting one as well as some others that you, if you know what went in, especially for compiled binaries, then you can use that information. If you don't, then you're scrubbing an output of the binary for a pattern, which is you know, it's just interesting to be more efficient and accurate around what went into it. Yeah, I don't know if, if you already discussed. So I was looking into this dependency tracker from OWASP, uh, where you can essentially put your SBOM and make the queries. It tells you if, if you find any package, any vulnerability, which projects are affected and which components are affected. Uh, I'm basically just trying to explore that uh, a bit further, but th that seems a really, really good tool to start with. Cool. So, um, yeah, uh, any other sort of topics um, or or uh, anything else on that front? Cool. Uh, Anybody? Uh, okay, actually, one thing I, I would like to ask, just because I know I've, I've been seeing um, some some stuff about some stuff that has been has anything interesting, uh, any new features been released in the past few weeks in any of the big pieces of software or or any of the sorts of you know things that it, that folks think is is interesting. I know I've been seeing some stuff on the Spiffy Spire side. I've been seeing some stuff getting into. Um, I, I saw a sort of an open PR in chains to kind of get, um, to kind of finish up the Spire integration. Um, it, it, curious if, if anybody is, you know, familiar with any, you know, cool, either new tools, any sort of uh, new features in, in any existing tools, any sort of new work that's kind of happening outside of this group that you think is really interesting. Or a hard group to get anything out of today. It looks like, yeah, I have no, been looking no problem. At the, I have been looking at the Tecton chain slash Spire stuff, but I think that's in a TEP that's about to be approved. So that's not the code itself. That's just the here's what we're going to code. Yeah, let me double check. I just saw something from. Um, well, in the very least, that. Uh, uh, apparently, um, I saw this, which appears to be, I guess, Matt has a way to sort of, um, support, uh, have chain support ambient. Um, oh, I guess it just got merged. Uh, uh yeah, yeah, merged, um, to, to get, uh, have, uh, chain support ambient um, Kubernetes ambient credentials. Give us one more thing to look at today. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, but yeah, if there, there's nothing else, um, can the meeting, uh, up early and, um, we'll see you all, uh, next week. And also, you know, I'll, I'll post in the chat 
in the next few days once we kind of get that draft finished and we're going to be publishing it out. And obviously the more that uh, the folks on this call can help spread the word, the, 